Buckle up. You are on one of the planet's natural thrill rides, rafting through whitewater rapids. But unfortunately for you, the worst is yet to come. You're in the water and struggling to breathe. What would you do to survive? Should you A, swim back to the raft and hang on, B, lie back and let the river take you, or C, grab onto the nearest boulder and wait for rescue? Choose carefully, you're inside a churning death trap. River rapids are created by four things, either uh, the underwater topography of a river, the rate at which a river is falling downhill or the gradient, compression, constriction, a river is flowing along and then suddenly there's a canyon that constricts it and now all of that water has to go through a much narrower area, a bottleneck, or obstruction, there's a creek that comes in and dumps a lot of sediment and rocks and boulders into the river right there. All natural rivers are dependent on upstream precipitation, but in rocky terrain, the source of the water in rapids is often melting snow. Rapids are graded on the international scale of river difficulty, which ranges from a class one to the virtually impossible torrent of a class six. But even beginner level rivers can catch boaters off guard and prove deadly. It's a known fact people underestimate the water, the power of water. The current, it is extremely dangerous. Over time, the river has moved boulders, cut its way through rocks. Do you really think you can fight that? Every year, nearly 50 people die in rapids in the U.S. alone. And now you're finding out just how quickly a swift water adventure can turn disastrous. <laughs> what would you do to survive? Being the man overboard in whitewater rapids. No solution guarantees your safety, but your best bet is B. Lie back and let the river take you, provided you point your feet downstream. If you happen to fall in the water, float on your back, feet downstream. That way, if you do encounter an object, your feet and legs will absorb the shock. And it's a lot less pain to have a broken leg than it is to have a crushed head. When you're in the water, you can guide yourself using the current as your friend. If you're whitewater rafting, you should have a, a flotation vest on. This is when that vest is going to become your best friend. You want to keep that vest on at all costs. Make sure that you're facing downstream. Make sure your feet are up in front of you. But couldn't you swim back to the boat? If you have a chance, you can hang on to the boat. You know, there's some safety in that. But you can get sucked down, you can get pulled down, you can get smashed against a lot of things. So if you have a chance to get to the riverbank, much better option. What about trying to grab onto a boulder or other object in the river? A lot of times you're going to find that they're covered with moss, other debris, they're sharp. It's going to be very difficult to hang on in moving water. If you find yourself in any kind of fast moving water, if you fall into a river, let people know that you're there. Yell out for help. Get your head up so that you can see what's coming up in front of you and attempt to go over obstacles at any chance. Luckily, this amateur rafter soon reaches calmer waters. <sighs> If you don't want to wash out in the rapids, first and foremost, always wear a life jacket and helmet. If you do go overboard, lie on your back and point your feet downriver. Then ride it out until you reach a safe place. Do not try to swim. And do not grab onto boulders or other objects. Stay sharp, and you should survive this terrifying whitewater horror.